Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, on this blessed Sunday, make us worthy to praise your resurrection with pure hearts and with clear consciences. With all the children of your holy church, we glorify and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the good and merciful Lord, who in his compassion came down to us and became flesh. He chose to taste death to save us, and he descended to the realm of the dead. By his resurrection he gave joy to his disciples and gave light to all the nations with the light of his salvation. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. O word of God, who can adequately place you for the depth of your compassion? And what voice can bless you, for you are above all praise. Neither mind nor tongue can describe the wonders you accomplished on Sunday, the day of your resurrection from the dead. And so with the psalmist David we cry out, This is the day which the Lord has made, let us rejoice in it and be he glad. Now, O Christ, our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense which we offer to you to forgive our sins, give peace of mind to those in distress, and comfort to those who are anxious. Bring back those who are far and watch over those who are near. Guide the shepherd, sanctify the priest, and purify the deacons. Pardon all sinners and guard the righteous. Protect orphans and help widows. Drive away conflicts and put an end to all dissension. Remember the faithful departed and grant them rest in your heavenly kingdom, that with them we may celebrate that eternal feast. We raise glory to you, to your blessed Father, and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
O Lord, accept the sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection with all the angels, to proclaim it with your women disciples and to rejoice in it with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Kadishat Shout with joy from the mountains, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of all the apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, among human beings, who knows what pertains to a person except the spirit of the person that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural person does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The spiritual person, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. 
Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. belong to the praise, glory, and honor of the most of the Trinity, find this incense. Hear this. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, At that very moment, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and he said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the, who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see, for I say to you, Many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. This is the truth, peace be with you. Now we have received, not the spirit of this world, but the spirit that is of God, so that we may know the things that are given us from God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So what is the mind of Christ? What is this idea that is meant to be transformative within us? As we mentioned to you before, a few weeks ago, on how to go to communion, because you're delightful as guests, it's wonderful, so we explain how to go to communion in the Eastern Church, and specifically in the Maronite Church. The profound bow and adoration before our Lord, to present ourselves with arms crossed, and simply to present our tongue, to receive our Lord under both species, by intinction, body, blood, soul, divinity, really, truly, substantially present. And then we said, there's no amen you don't need to say. And please try to refrain from making the sign of the cross too soon while you're still at communion. 
so we don't lose the precious blood and everything else by a hand coming up. And you did it brilliantly. So the question becomes the mind of Christ. And you know whether you know it or not during this pandemic, my obligation is now to make you all good Maronites. You may have come here to find mass, but I am to bring you into Beit Marun to make you understand what it is, this profound theology and tradition of the Catholic faith. And so we ask again the question, what is the mind of Christ? It's going to be fundamentally the same in all throughout the entire universal Catholic Church. But it's going to be colored and it's going to be flavored and it's going to have a certain nuance, whether it's out of Byzantium, whether it's out of Rome, whether it's out of Antioch in the Syrian plains of Mesopotamia. And while they are all gorgeous and all beautiful, God's providence has landed you here. And our esteemed and beloved Maronites who are here, who laid this path out for you, will lead you into that light in their charity, in their kindness, in their welcome and open spirit, which has always been a characteristic of the Middle East. You go to the Middle East, and the good ladies will jam you full of food and jam you full of drink, and you will never have an empty table when you stand up. Because if the table's empty, they haven't done it correctly. And that enthusiastic welcome is three times multiplied in the house of God. And so may your table be heaped up with richness and abundance from Beit Marun. And regardless of how long this pandemic lasts, may you always have that mind of Christ flavored by Antioch and flavored by the monastic tradition of Beit Marun. A few weeks ago, we mentioned on Trinity Sunday that it's not a theory about the divinity. It is a reality of God who has revealed himself personally as to who he is. We just find out mysteriously that there are, it's a relation subsistently within the one sole divinity, Father, Word, Rojo, Spirit. And this reality then the church has chosen to read week after week, if you notice. And in this, in this letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul is talking about what did you receive at baptism? What did you receive in chrismation? We did not receive the spirit of the world. The world you had in your mother's womb. You have that spirit of the world already. It just comes with our birth. But the spirit of Christ, that is different. And the spirit of Christ which is given to us, he says, is given to us so that we be transformed, so that we see the other gifts that God has given us, including that birth from our mothers and from our fathers. And that aspect of transforming even what is of nature is seen in a different light. And so the, the mind of Christ is something that illuminates and transforms and elevates that individual into the divine logos, the divine word, so that we be transformed and see differently, but in seeing differently to be grateful, to be filled with thanksgiving because we are all touched by the beauty of God. It's everywhere. Even in pandemic, even in economic stress, the hand of God and the beauty of God is always there. And the mind of Christ allows us to see that. And that is why the Christians will go through any crisis in a dramatically different way from the world. Everyone has to suffer in life. But the pagans don't know why they suffer. It's just a pure exercise of trying to get out of it and to escape from it. Now, as Christians, we do that too. But we also realize that this has a meaning and a purpose. Suffering is not futile for those who know the cross. Friday was the Feast of the Sacred Heart. And it's the great reminder to us that love has that 
nuance, not even nuance, but that essential aspect, which is Calvary. But Calvary is not the full story. It finishes in the resurrection. So as you notice in our prayers, every Sunday is Easter. Every Sunday is the resurrection. Allow us to announce with the angels your resurrection. Allow us to rejoice with those women in the garden. It doesn't matter if it's April. It doesn't matter if it's May. It doesn't matter if it's 120 degrees on June 21st. At least it feels like 120 degrees. I don't know about you. It is still Easter. It is always the day of the resurrection. That is the mind of Christ. We see things differently. Which is why St. Paul in this letter says that the sensual man, the man who lives only according to his nature and his senses, he doesn't understand any of this. This is gobbledygook. It doesn't mean anything. But the sensual man does not perceive, he doesn't see these things that are of the Spirit of God. In fact, St. Paul goes on to say, for to him, they're all foolishness. It's stupid. I was talking with the seminarian yes, on Friday. We were talking about St. Felicity. You may know the name, and you may already know the story. St. Felicity in the late, I think, she died, I think she died under Datius. So the 200s, late 200s anyways, early church under the imperial persecutions, they arrest this young woman, and she was a young woman, and she was an expecting mother. She was pregnant. And they threw her in prison. And the mercy of the pagans was, well, we'll leave you languishing in prison long enough to have the baby, and then we'll kill you the next day. That's the logic of the world, is it not? And while she was in prison laying there, she went into labor, that's what they were waiting for, and she, no, no midwives, no one happening, just laying on the prison floor, giving birth to a child on your own. But worse, remember this is all foolishness. You're expecting, you're a young mother, you have a child coming. Why do you hang on to this dead criminal from the first century ago? And so as she lay there giving birth, the sensual man does not understand the gospel. They do not have the mind of Christ. And as she laid there, gritting her teeth, howling perhaps, who knows? Only the mothers can know what goes on in labor. I can only stand back in admiration and awe as you bring life into the world. But not the pagans, they stood, the guards stood at the grill, at the gate of her prison cell and made fun of her during this whole thing, saying to her, if you can't deal with labor, what are you going to do tomorrow in front of the animals in the circus when they come out to eat you? If you can't even just give birth, how are you going to be torn apart by lions? And Felicity, having the mind of Christ, answered them straightforward. Today, I labor. Tomorrow, there will be one who is stronger than me within. That is the mind of Christ. And when we try to embrace that mind, we, be, we forego and go beyond the foolishness of this world. And foolishness, we know it is. You just have to turn on any news network and see what is going on in this insanity. And it is insane. So it is even more of a reason why we choose to want and to deepen and to make more profoundly rooted in our lives that mind of Christ. But St. Paul goes on and he says it's foolishness to that person in the world who just lives by the senses because he cannot understand. Because these things are spiritually examined, you speak a different language than your colleagues perhaps at work may speak. You speak a different language of understanding than the person who lives down the street, perhaps. And since the majority of Mainers have no religion, it's probably even likely that you speak a different language than the person who lives down the street. They cannot understand. So from one aspect, have pity on them. They're clueless. You're speaking Swahili and they only know Ukrainian. 
And so when you talk and try to explain the gospel, they just scratch their head. Their first reaction will be to make fun of it because it just sounds stupid. And then in the end, they still just don't understand. That is what St. Paul is laying out in the second chapter of the first letter to Corinthians. So let us ask the Sacred Heart that he give us this profound desire. And as we sit in these pews over these next months, not just simply to have the mind of Christ, but the mind of Christ that it has been lived for over 16 centuries in Beit Marun. That we may truly receive the inheritance and the heritage of the great ascetic apostle, Saint Marin. And to give us that depth. So that Saint Paul, when he finishes in the reading that we have today, for who has known the mind of the Lord? He's quoting Isaiah. For who has known the mind of the Lord so that he can tell the Lord what to do? Of course, everyone should be answering, nobody. And then St. Paul says, but we, we have received the mind of Christ. And praise be to God that it is true. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father of all things, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Tell what my dem hate a loho, while what a loho dam had a tongue. Rain of silver, tie of talk, a little bite of westward and high and low, or go on a
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, St. Mary, and St. Jude, and St. Louis. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774. 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord may the light
light of your face shine upon us. Deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, through your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Truly, it is right and just to glorify, exalt you, O Maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you, and with voices of praise we cry out and we proclaim. you sent your Son into the world, and he became flesh of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. And What's <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yabel Talmi Dao Kado Mara Sabishtaw Mehene Kulhu Hono Deni Tao Demodila Diati Ki Hadato Dahlo Faikun Wahlov Sagiye Mete Shadu Meti Hem Hosoyon Home wa hoye dan alam alamin We then commanded and instructed them saying each time you celebrate these holy mysteries you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. Lord, we 
remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when we you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you, and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, And he may make and spread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. Lord, accept our intercessions and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desire but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Louis Gonzaga, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rests among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Favor, remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. From 
grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O God the Father, you strengthen and you encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins. For you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the Holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, bless us be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be the glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our lives be Yeah. 